Happy Friday, friends! Today I'm going to show you some really quick and easy um, painting um, demonstrations on tile coasters. These are from the uh, Home Improvement Store. I think they were about four cents a piece, just white glazed ceramic tiles. And here are the um, examples we're going to do today. I'm going to try to get them all done. If not, um, well, we'll see what we can do. All right. Um, the first thing you want to do is um, wipe your tiles down with some rubbing alcohol. This is just your regular 70%. I use this stuff for um, before I paint on glass or ceramic. The same techniques I'm going to show you today you can do on um, on you know white mugs from the dollar store, um, plates, anything really, anything ceramic. So, but if you're doing like plates, you want to do like the rim, not the area that's going to come in contact with food. If you're doing um, if you're going to do mugs, you want to do like the bottom of the cup, not the inside, but the area that's not going to be touched when you drink, not the part that's going to touch your mouth. So that's just the thing to keep in mind when you're working with the ceramic paint. All right, so I was doing this project with children last night at my free library crafts class. So um, I know you can do this and you can also share this uh, project with your children. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the blueberries and I want you to take a skinny liner brush and look at this brush. It's got nice long bristles. That is for carrying a lot of paint. I don't want to see your paint. Well, not like I can see your paint, but I don't want to see your paint going beyond halfway up the bristles. Once the paint gets into that metal part, it can damage your brush and it can also, um, it'll also make your bristles spray apart, splay apart and be difficult to control. So what I'm doing is adding enough water here to make it um, the consistency of cream. And then I'm using my brush straight up and down and I am going to just kind of put some wiggly vines, okay? You could throw a couple of those in. If you make a mistake, grab your alcohol wipe and just um, just uh, wipe it off and do it again. Um, this is the only time I would water down these enamel paints. These are full cart enamels that I'm using and um, they have that little E on the top if you're looking for them in the store. They're about $1.75 a bottle but they last forever. As long as they don't freeze, they'll last a really long time. And you don't need much. You can see my palette. That's more than I would squirt out for um, for the tiles. It does dry really quickly too. Alright, then I want you to use your finger. My index finger seems to work the best because it seems to be rounder. Get a little bit of purple and a little bit of blue. Just kind of get it, get your finger loaded up like that. And then we're just going to tap on blueberries. The more you press, the bigger the berries will be. And you actually kind of get a little bit of a highlight when you do that, just naturally. And if you need to pause, if you're painting right along with me, which I think is awesome, and you need to pause, go ahead and do that. Um, and you know, you can always start it right back up. Or you can watch it again. That's a great thing about YouTube. You're not like, you know, you're not, you don't have to wait for me to come around and help you. I think about that in class. It's like, oh, I'll just do a video of this. They can check it out if they forget or they want to make some more. Uh, they can check it out later. I dropped a little bit of water there. I'm just blotting it off. All right. So while that is um, still wet, I can add a little bit of that frosty highlight to it or I can let it dry first. I can do either, but I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to use this uh, angular brush. Um, use whatever you're comfortable with. Actually, I think a smaller one would probably be a little bit easier to manage. That one's a little bit smaller. And I just want to get a little bit of paint on the corner. And um, my brush is damp. I'm just kind of working the brush so that the paint, I don't have a big gob of it. It's just kind of um, just right on the edge, but it kind of wants to blend. And I'm just going to go in and just give it a little bit of a frosty highlight and since this is these are kind of like you think of blueberries growing in the bushes on the ground you don't have to worry so much about what side you put it on because um, where it's more of like just a frosty highlight it's it's gonna be fine and you don't even have to do it to everyone if you don't want to and this can help you correct any um, weird if you have any weird edges my edges look all right um, and if you want, you can let the, the undercoat dry and go on it. It'll just give you a different, slightly different look, but it's, it'll look fine. It's fine either way. All right, the next thing we're going to do are the leaves, and you can use a flat or an angular for this. Um, this is a quarter inch, oh no, it's number six flat. I think it's about a quarter of an inch. And um, what I'm going to do is I've got two greens here. I'm going to get half in one color, half in the other, so each corner is in its own color. Can you see that? And then I'm going to work the colors together on my palette. I'm just using a piece of packaging for that. Okay, so I've got that nice blend growing across. Um, feel free to hit the you know full screen button on the video so you can see. I want you to see the, the example, the 
picture and the palette, so that's why I kind of have it zoomed out like this. Um, and you're just going to press and lift, and that's going to make your little leaves. It's simple. You don't have to worry about it. If you want bigger leaves, press more or use a bigger brush. I actually find it's a little easier for me to pick it up and um, do them that way. I think the flat's a little easier to use an angle for this. I was using the angular last night in class thinking that would be easier, but actually, because it's flat, I can flip it around if I want to highlight on a on the top of the bottom. It works a little bit better than the angular for this, but you can use either. And turning the tile around as you go will help you get a better better control. It's like I find it's easier to go away from myself, so when I pull towards myself, I don't like those leaves as well. But you could try it both ways and see what works best for you. Just have fun and fill it in with leaves. Now remember this technique because you'll use it again. If we get to doing the rosebuds today, um, we'll use it again. Um, I'm not going to edit this video. I have so many different things to work on in the studio today to get ready for this weekend that um, that I don't have time to edit, but I will get as much as I can done in this 20 minutes. Actually, I did the rosebuds in another video um, on a craft box, so I'll put a link to that. Um, in case you want to try that out that way. If I don't get to it, then you can find the video where I do, sh do show that technique. I think I actually did blueberries on that one too, but I just wanted to kind of talk about the uh, ceramic paint here. All right, now the last thing we want to do on this is to go back to our liner brush and um, some black paint. And typically I don't use black, but when I'm doing kind of decorative stuff like this, I will. Um, and we're going to put li those little bitty things that those blueberries have. I don't know what you call them. They're the little, I don't know what they're called, but they have them, these little black, um, I don't know. I don't know what they're called. They're kind of the opposite of the stem part. And uh, the cool thing about this is you can actually, if you get a rough edge, you can put it right there on that rough edge and no one will even know that you had a rough edge. You'll just think it's what you meant to do. We'll just tap those right on there. Very easy. I'm planning on growing blueberries this year. Blueberry, a high bush blueberry. I hope it works out well. I need, I know I need to have a couple so they'll pollinate. We've tried it before, but I don't know. We've never really had much luck with them. I'm hoping, I think it's just we bought bad plants. And then sign your name. And if you're, if it's, uh, you're showing a child how to do this, have them put the date on it too. If it's a Mother's Day gift or, um, whatever, you'll want to know when it was made. So there is that. Oh, if you, if you do feel like you just need a little something extra, um, you can go ahead with your liner brush and thick white paint and just, you could throw in a little bit of a highlight on some of these. And that just is kind of like a little icing on the cake. Um, I wouldn't do it to everyone, just a few of them. Blueberries aren't really that shiny, but for some reason a highlight does can kind of make things look nice. So there's that. You can put more vines in there if you want to, completely up to you. All right, let's do a sunflower next. That's really easy. Um, this is one of the washed tiles. I'll show my sunflower. I'm not going to put the background in because that's pretty easy. You're just going around the... Um, uh, you're just going around it basically. Um, so this is we're going to use a round brush and Let me see. What do I have over here for a round acrylic brush? I know I have one. I don't want to use my watercolor brushes with Acrylic right here. All right, so this is a number 10 round. You might want to go with something a little smaller This is probably a little big for the tile, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Hopefully it's clean. Yep um, I'm gonna grab and then when you do the when you do the sunflowers You kind of want to load up your brush like I'm gonna load it up with this um, burnt sienna color Then I'm gonna load it up with this so I've got two colors on the brush and again I just want the colors on the middle and I'm just gonna press twist lift press twist lift now this time we'll go in with that yellow ochre and then grab a little bit of that um, bright yellow press twist lift press twist lift you can move your um, thing around if you, you can move your tile around if you need to press twist lift just go around just vary your colors as you go and I twirl my brush as I go so that I can get some nice um, a nice point on the end now I want to do some yellow with a little bit of white on the tip for highlights. Press twist lift, press twist lift. And once this is dry, it's a very durable paint. Press twist lift. And I'm just going to kind of neaten it up a little bit by holding it and uh, making sure that my 
points are all kind of coming out from the center. And these are going to be coasters. All right, so then rinse off my brush, go in with the brown. And there's nothing here that, that you can't do. This is, you know, it's just a decorative painting. It's nothing fancy. Go in and dab in the center with the uh, couple shades of brown. Even add a little bit of the black and brown to the bottom of that. And I'm dabbing it so I get the texture of sunflower seeds. And I'm going to dab in some yellow ochre and some white at the top. Just like that. And very simple. You know, you don't, every everything you do does not have to be perfect. I'm going to grab a little bit of these two colors of green throw in a stem and then they have kind of jaggedy petals I'm going to go in with a lighter green just kind of just kind of tap on the top of a couple petals and you know this is something fun that you can show your children your grandchildren how to do get them involved get them loving painting kids are very process oriented but the cool thing about this is you actually have a really cute and useful product when you're done and when kids start to get to a certain age, they will um, they will really be looking for that product to be to be there and not just the process. So it's also kind of nice to get the older children involved that may not think that they're artistic or they don't want to bother with if, with it if it's not going to come out well. You know, kids I'd say right around age ten they start to have that sort of bias where they don't want to they don't want to bother if it's not going to come out good. They don't want to waste their time. Um, so that can help them. I love art. Now what I did for the background, I just mixed blue and white and kind of um, get that that color and just paint it around. Let that dry and then paint around the background. That's how you do that. All right, the um, grapes are kind of fun because I did them in a kind of non-traditional manner. Um, and I had these wine corks and I thought, oh, perfect, wine grapes. We'll, we'll use this to kind of stamp. And it's not going to give you a perfect impression. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to load up this wine cork in that. It's actually called berry wine. And then I'm going to also tap into some of that blue. And I'm going to make a cluster of, um, of circles. It doesn't do too bad. You do need to put a decent amount of paint on there. And you're probably thinking, Lindsay, oh boy, how does that help? Why don't I just paint it on there? This will give you the foundation of having some, having that basic shape already done, so it can help you not be kind of too fussy about it. You'll already have it down, done. All you got to do is refine a little bit with some white highlights. So that's why, um, that's why I do that. I haven't lost my mind completely. <laughs> okay, so there, we got some grapes stamped on. Just a cork, you know, I save corks. The rubber corks are really handy if you have emery boards or sanding discs or files. Um, if you rub them over the rubber corks, it'll take the adhesive off. Like, so if you've done resin, things like that, it will remove it. So that's kind of a handy trick to know. And then um, here I've got this, uh, use any flat or angular, quarter inch or smaller, and I'm going to go into the white, just get some white on the corner. Since this paint is still wet, I can go in and I can kind of add highlights to the forward ones and it will mix in the paint that's already there. I can even spin my brush all the way around if I want to. Just want to um, add some highlights to some of these. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. You're just accenting what you've stamped and you're letting the paint work. Let the paint do the work. You're just guiding it. Okay. The paint wants to be grapes. You just need to give it a little guidance. And if you did lose some of the darks, you can go ahead and um, grab some of that. You can use whatever brush you feel comfortable with. I'm just going to grab a little of that wine, a little bit of that blue together and just go in there. I can fill in some of the, the grapes in behind so that they're letting the foreground grapes stand out a little bit. No, this is just easy painting. It's nothing fancy. I typically don't paint in acrylics. It's not my... Um, it's not my favorite, but I find doing a fun project like this is uh, it's just fun. It's just fun. It's great to share it with children too. They really like it when they can you can share them a few, share a few tricks with them, and they can have have something that's beautiful. And I really love the quality of the brush stroke there. It's kind of fun. All right, I'm gonna throw in a couple leaves, 
just uh, make sure you dry your brush off really well before you grab paint so you don't want to make this watery. In the case of vines, um, you do have to water it down a little bit to help it help it flow, but um, but you know you don't want to do that too much because you do affect the bonding ability of the paint when you do that. So I'd actually recommend going over it with a little, there's clear medium. I got a kit of this actually at Martin's at one point and um and it came with all these colors so these are even colors i wouldn't necessarily choose because they are a little um they are a little country or they're just a little muted they're not like pure colors i tend to go with pure colors dog is barking at something out there um so so that's why i have this this uh selection of colors i'm just mixing in some of that uh green i think it's like an ivy green so I get a nice natural color. I'm not going to worry about this looking exactly like some grapes. I'm just getting the, um, uh, what do you want to call it? The, uh, I just want to get the mood. Everything wine themed has been so popular these days too. There we go. Wine and bacon. What is bacon? What's the big bacon obsession? Have you noticed that bacon is very trendy right now? It's just disturbing. It's plain disturbing. <laughs> says the vegetarian. All right, I'm gonna put a brown stem on there. I'm not even cleaning my brush. It's gonna harmonize there quite nicely. A little stem, throw a couple vines on. I went a little crazy with those leaves. Um, I should probably look at a picture. <laughs> oh, that's all right though. Just throw a few, few vines in there. Take more time than I am, please. I just want to give you a, uh, Oh, let me show you how to erase a mistake while we're at it, because I'm not loving that vine. Just like this. And wipe that right away. You can even scrape it off with a razor blade if it, if it dried on you. All right, and I will throw another little curly cue in there, and then we'll go on to our rosebud. Look at that. We are cooking with fire. And again, you know, sign your name. So there you go. There's easy grapes. Easy grape coasters. All right, so for rosebuds, that's super easy. And um, I've got my tile, like, tile here. We're going to use a either an angular or a flat brush. Either way is fine. Either brush is fine. They'll both work. We're going to do side loading, just like we did with our um, leaves. Mix them together. I've got white on one side. I've got red on the other. And... I'm going to do a, an upside down U and then a right side up U and that makes that's all there is to doing the rosebud. Upside down U, right side up U. I was actually showing some of the adults, uh, some of the kids' parents how to do this last night. It was kind of fun. It's, it was baseball season. Well, it's baseball softball season. so. Um, this time of year, it's hard to get people into your classes, even if they are free, <laughs> because they're so busy with their different events. All right, so for the stems, using the same brush, grabbing some of the uh, lighter green. I'm just going to grab down some stems. For the little hip part of the flower, I'm grabbing that lighter green, adding a little darker green to it. Just going to do a little bit of a bloop, bloop, bloop. It's like a little U. going to do um, some leaves doing the side loading again and I'm just gonna do that same leaf we did with the blueberries just gonna do it twice easy as pie I want to put some of those little um thingamabobbies around the around the uh, top of the the rosebud just with some dark green you know what are they called you know those little bitty bloop, little mustaches like the little little mustaches I got a little too much water on there You know, like that, you know, if they're, if it's a really closed bud, they're right up around, they're, they're right, growing right up around the, the petals. All right, and then we could put a little bow on there, as easy as maybe, just with a small flat brush. I'm going to just load up some white and some pink, and I am just going to tie a very loose, mussy bow around it. And with the little tails. See, this would be such an easy present for Mother's Day. And the little knot I'm doing with just the white so it can mix with the colors underneath. And that's all there is to it. Um, I want to thank you so much for watching. And I uh, wish all the moms out there a very happy Mother's Day. Uh, don't forget to call your mom, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it. And uh, until next time, happy crafting.